Hello there, how you doing and uh, welcome back everyone. So today, now that we have finally closed our little chapter on Greta Van Fleet and all its coverage. Nani? Impossible, perhaps the archives are incomplete. Thank you for all the support by the way, it's been very fun. <laughs> We're looking on to new landmarks, new acts, and spicy new music. So in today's edition of the Rich Source Review, we will be looking at The Crawling Kingsnake by The Black Keys. The single released as to tease up their upcoming blues cover album to come up in May known as Delta Cream. This song specifically is a cover of John Lee Hooker's Crawling Kingsnake, obviously. I really enjoyed the Black Keys interpretation of it, and I just want to talk about it immediately. And hold up there, hold up there, hold up there. Some of you out there may be sitting there pondering, Fred, why are we supposed to give a shit about a cover album, about a cover song, reinterpretation of old music in the modern age? There's so much other good music that's just come out. Robert Finley's put out some music. Carl Denson's put out a fucking album with his band. Suspect 208's active again, and so on, and so forth, and so on, and so forth. But my answer here is... Exactly the question you asked. I think it's always really fun to look at blues cover albums and stuff like that because it's really, really fun in my opinion to see the reinterpretation of these classic pieces. Frankly, I would even argue that sometimes it's harder to come up with a successful cover project as opposed to fresh original music. Now, obviously, if the whole fucking world and the whole modern music scene was just a bunch of cover projects, that would be very stale, but you know what? Throw it at every once in a while for some spice, you can get some good stuff. Uh, Larkin Poe, for example, they put out a cover album in December, which was really, really fun. And, you know, it's just, it's wholesome, it's nice, and those are two things that I like to keep going right on here. Very nice, she's a chan! So, let us caffeine up as per usual. And jump into our ingredients section of our big batch of pasta sauce that is the Black Keys today. And quick uh, interruption in the middle of the video. Sport lately has been absolutely great. I'm noticing that obviously the subscriber count is rising. Everyone seems to be interacting with the content a little bit. So if you want to join in, get into the little community of wholesomeness that we have going on here. Consider subscribing down below and we will give you a warm, warm welcome in a signature Fred Walter style. And, and yes, the finger clicks, they all... I don't need to practice them, it's just... Yeah, I'm just that fucking cool. So first things first, uh, let's just point out that it's really refreshing to jump back into a piece of music by the Black Keys because it feels like I haven't heard of them for fucking ages. So that's always very fun. And whenever I think of the Black Keys specifically, I always think of a very blues-centered project, which always goes through a bit of a rigmarole of modern interpretation with regards to effect pedals or with regards to production techniques. So the idea of witnessing them go through a blues cover album to me seems not just appropriate, but fuck me, I'm looking forward to it. And if this song specifically is any indication as to the quality of the album to come, I think we're in for a good one. Crawling King Snake, from the Black Keys point of view, is six minutes and eight seconds of pure bluesy goodness. So the main ingredient of the song, really, is the drum beat, is the rhythm section that kind of adds volume to the song. The original was Johnny Hooker just chilling with his guitar, playing using the bass notes of the instrument to offer your rhythm section, kind of fiddling with the high end to offer his rhythm in, in a very traditional bluesman style. And it's quite fun to hear this rendition add a rhythm section to substitute the playing around with the bass notes, which is quite simple, yet effective in the rhythm with which it's played to replace the shuffle. The guitar and the drums in tandem do a pretty good job at finding a new way of interpreting the blues shuffle which characterizes this song, whilst at the same time letting the guitar kind of explore the higher register notes a bit more and put some little blues licks in. And obviously we're talking about like keys, so there's a bit of reverb, there's a bit of fuzz, there's a bit of fancy spadangled goodness all around. So in my opinion, quite fun. And although from this description it may seem that we've really diverted quite far away from the original, the riff captures the essence of the song quite effectively still. It's not a shuffle, but 
Again, some note choices really act quite symmetrically with the original. And the one thing that I thought was fun and really uh, an homage to the original song by Johnny Hooker was the warmth of the vocal tone. As far as I'm concerned, that is the most similar element of the song, but at the same time, something that I wouldn't really have wanted to change because the real essence and expressivity of the song comes down to, you know, how, how the how the vocals kind of sing out the emotions, they express them and let the rest of the instruments fill in the gaps. So just to recap, really, we have fun drums acting with the guitar to replace the shuffle. We have minimalistic, but at the same time, relatively complex in a way, riff to kind of paint the pictures to the song, but not do the same thing. And some really soft vocals to just fill in the gaps, soften it up add some level of expressivity to the song itself and given that it's you know a bit of a slower pace it fits really really well and it's really fun and that being said we move on to the flavor section of our review from a flavor standpoint we are getting some signature black keys tone that we always get as i said the other day in my Battle at Gardens Gate review, you know, that there's always that sort of innominate tone, which is very unique to the band, and we should all just take a second to realize how difficult it is to, you know, come up with a whole tonal identity. And it's quite fun to hear how this tonal identity overlaps the original song, reinterprets it, and in my opinion, it really does all that a cover song needs to do. Because if we were just playing the original fucking song, John Lee Hooker is possibly... Uh, I don't know, I feel kind of bad saying the best bluesman of all time, but he is definitely one of the best original guitarists and just overall players to just set the scene. And, you know, paying our respects to such a legend in this way really gets the job done. So from a flavor standpoint, has the flair there, reinterprets the music, stamps their own signature tone on it. Fucking, yeah, yeah. And the added benefit as well is that it's just different enough to the point where it just sounds like an original piece if you had no idea what the original song was. So, you know, it's just that it's just a good job. And to close things off, why don't we run through the presentation of this single? Because, and let's say it together, raise your voices in unison, everyone. What good is a delicious batch of fresh sauce if it looks like shit and no one wants to get anything close to it? Well, in this specific instance, we've already gone over it. We have some really fresh, locally sourced ingredients being a nice cover song. They've added their own signature spices into it. And they've really added some, uh, you know, some secret ingredient, uh, little, their own little secret formula, if you will, to give their own a taste and own flair to it and make the dish such that it is its own beast in its own right. We also get the added benefit that obviously it's new Black Keys music and as I said before it feels like I haven't gone down in a while so it's always refreshing to get some of that. A classic group which is well re respected and revered amongst everyone and you know as much as perhaps in recent years a lot of people that I know specifically may have been veering off them in a search for either musical complexity or just because, you know, their tastes have matured. I still am very fond of the group, and I still consider them some of the most iconic 2010s rock bands who really, again, have their roots firmly planted in the blues. And again, I, I have wide appreciation for them. So as far as Source is concerned, it's all there. You know, they, they get a very simple, traditional tomato sauce pasta. They add a little bit of spice to it. They add maybe just a half clove of garlic crushed, cooked in the sauce, removed later, into basil, and finally, a tiny bit of cheese in the end, cooked in the sauce, to just make it a bit more girthy, a bit more substantial, so I think that's all swell. Of the sauce meter, I think that we are sitting at a very comfortable 85% flavor. I don't want to go too high, but at the same time, I don't want to lowball them any lower than they should be, as I've made it abundantly clear. I think it's a tasteful interpretation of a classic song. But yes, I hope that you are happy with me, happy to hear some new Black Keys music. Uh, what did you think of the single? How do you feel about the fact that it's a cover project? These are all valid questions which you can answer down below. Thank you all very much for tuning in. If you've stuck with me up to this point, please consider subscribing down below. I very much appreciate it. And that is me for the time being. Thank you all for tuning in. And do remember, 
stay classy, my internet people.